This is a standard um, 10 watt LED floodlight fixture and originally when I bought this unit it came with a passive infrared detector on it and it was fitted with a white LED. The passive infrared detector failed completely and I ended up replacing the whole fitting so I thought in that case um, I'll retrofit a new LED into this one. So I'll show you how these things open up. They're actually really nicely made inside. So the outer frame comes off, then there's a layer of glass and on the back of that is a silicon seal which is just loose so it can kind of sit into the frame before you put the glass in. Then comes the reflector and with the reflector in this one you don't need to take all the screws out, you only need to take a couple out and loosen the other ones off. will just pop out and you'll suddenly realize inside that this is a standard 10 watt LED and it's just got a, a screw at each corner and the wire coming through from the ballast unit in the back. Now one of the nice features about this apart from the fact it uses a standard chip which is great because it means you can uh, replace the chip if needs be, one of the nice features about this is that the ballast unit in the back is separate from the main light assembly at the front so it offers very good thermal isolation and there are four screw points plus two um, ports for the cable to come through. So in this case I changed this LED to, from the white one to a blue one just because I fancied making a blue light and the first um, I, I misread the ballast in the back um, which I didn't realize at the time I'd got the wrong LED and I put in uh, one where the nine chips in this are wired in sort of series parallel because some of them have the LEDs wired as three series circuits of three all wired in parallel and it means that the forward voltage for those um, lamps is about um, nine volts and it draws about an amp with the current split roughly equally between each of the series circuits and when I put that LED in um, and turned it on, it was just pulsing every so often um, and cutting out. And the reason it was doing that was because it was seeing too low a voltage across the LEDs and it was drawing too much current and it's a safety circuit that was tripping. So um, I realized what I'd done. I got the other type of LED, which has all the LEDs in series. So it's more like a, a forward voltage of about 27 volts for all the LEDs and that's around about 350 milliamps. So it's worth noting that uh, you have to get the correct LED according to the little power supply in the back. So let's open the back. The other light I got was a warm white one with the passive infrared. It's been fantastic. It really puts out quite a useful amount of light. It's very good indeed. I like it a lot. All these things, all these lights seem to have the same weakness. They come with a very short flex, which is annoying. So you invariably have to either put a junction box very close to it, a waterproof junction box, or um, lengthen the flex, which is a wee bit messy inside. Well, let's open this up. Here we go. So inside is a really common LED driver, all fully encased. Um, the sort of thing that, it's another thing worth noting that um, if you want to change the LED for one that's the um, that operates at 9 volts or the one that operates at the 27 volt um, you can just get a suitable power supply to fit that um, so if the power supply in an existing light fails as long as you get the same rating in this case what's it say output DC 1 to 9 oh no uh, 7 to 9 times 1 watt 300 milliamps 
plus or minus 20 milliamps. So as long as you get the correct power supply, you can just fit, fit a new one in the back, if it fits, of course, but um, most of them are quite compact. Uh, th on this one again, I'm afraid that when it arrived, the earth wire was loose. That's uh, just this thing that happens with China. They just don't seem to regard earthing too important. So fundamentally all it is, it's, it's the mains in now. I think I opened this up and put a new cable in. I'm pretty sure I did that. And just re-soldered the cables directly into the inside of the power supply because it certainly didn't have a long enough flex beforehand. But yeah, it, it just shows that these things are very, very modular and very hackable and uh, just really nicely designed. Um, I've not had any problems with water ingress into the either this one when it was out there, other than the passer infrared. I'm not sure why it failed. I think it might have just been a crap design. But um, certainly this didn't let water in this area or the back here. And the one I've got out at the moment is also completely dry. It's not showing the telltale signs of condensation when water gets in. So it's obvious that the, the designs are really quite good in that sense. And as I say, I really love the fact that the LED is mounted straight onto basically an air convection flow uh, heatsink fin here. And uh, they keep the LED source itself isolated from the power supply. So both of them run fairly cool. It's a good light. I, I do like these little lights.